If there's an open way, I'll just run While everything else fades and turns to dust We're searching to find a way from here We'll follow our souls into the night Let's disappear Cause wherever we go It's a new day, a new week with new challenges, new opportunities and new blessings. Welcome Revival family to another week of Getting Connected. Thank you for tuning in. Well, I'm sure you're quite used to the simple request that we put forward to you week after week and that is to share the hope of Jesus with someone. All you have to do is click that share button. It's as simple as that. Go on, start your watch party now. Great. There is no greater act of worship than giving. Tithe is the surest, most reliable insurance on the earth. When you tithe, God rebukes the devourer for your sake. As you give faithfully today, may you be fully covered and insured. Your giving has uplifted so many lives and given hope during this pandemic. Thank you. We are not put on this earth for ourselves, but are placed here for each other. Family, please know that there is a support structure in place at Revival Ministries to help you get through what you're going through. You don't have to go through it alone. So don't hesitate to contact our full-time staff and pastors who are readily available to assist you with counseling and prayer as our offices are open during the week. Well, it's that time. 
Shut. It's that time. It's time to be empowered, uplifted, motivated and refueled. We are ready for God's servant, Dr. Alan Joseph, to deliver God's anointed word. Get ready for some awesome, inspiring revelation. But before that, let's send our praise and worship up as we join our praise team. We pray you enjoy our time of online connection. Until next week, stay prayed up, fasted up, and ready to take on anything the devil might throw your way. We are more than conquerors. See you again soon. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Let's just worship God today. Amen. Lift up your hands wherever you are and just begin to raise up your voice. Whatever battle you're facing, whatever challenge you're facing right now, just remember that the word of God says that we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Let's just worship God today. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord oh. there's power in the mighty name of Jesus He wages, He will win. I'm not backing down from any triumph. Cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the Belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. 
you, Lord, we are more than conquerors here. With you, Lord, we are more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord, that the battle is won. Thank you, Lord, that the battle is won. Well, greetings in the sweet and powerful name of Jesus. I'm privileged and honored, and I trust you will be blessed with what I'm about to share. Oh, my word, I know. Fear is all around. I preached on fear some months ago, maybe last year. Maybe I need to preach on it again because the fear is increasing, especially when we know friends and loved ones that are sick with this virus and those that are dying. Come on, let's come together. Let's stay positive. Let's be hopeful. You know, I'm so glad when I hear people that don't know Jesus are hopeless. But you and I know that we know Jesus and we have hope that he'll bring us through. Amen. So come and let's get together. If you've forgotten, this is our church time. Call your families, phone somebody and say, it's church time. The word is getting ready to be shared. You cannot afford to miss this word because I'm sharing a special word that I don't think I've shared before in this way. It's a personal testimony together with the message that I'm sharing will truly inspire you to see where God has brought me. It is no secret what God can do. Amen. So come on, let's get ready so that I can minister to you in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, I trust you're ready. I want to speak today on a principle or a title called Kingdom Principles, Doing Things God's Way putting God first in everything we do. So for the first month of 2021, I want to share with you a testimony that happened to me over 45 years ago that changed my life around for the better. And when I had no hope of a financial breakthrough that could better my life, oh, I wish you could truly get into my place right now of thinking the way I thought back then and what I am now, you will know it can only be the grace of God. So my testimony goes as follows. One Sunday walking home after church with my friends, when I heard the conversations, what they were able to afford, what they could purchase, I got very depressed thinking that I would never even be able to own a car because my dad never owned a car. So I didn't look around and see anything personal that could inspire me. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a very poor self-esteem or a low self-esteem of myself. To worsen my situation, I used to stammer. And that was so embarrassing. But you know, when I got born again, and the leaders gave me a chance to share back then in our cottage meetings, I was bold enough to share, but my church knows this. Now that I'm on listening to every one of you that are listening to me online, you need to hear this, that when I used to share in our local church, in cottage meetings, I could not read the Bible in public. So I saw somebody in, sitting in front, read the Bible, and I would preach so fast. And my mother would ask me, who heard you or who understood you? But I think one of the strengths, I had boldness. And that boldness, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I was healed of that stammering tongue, as you can now hear me. So miracles have happened way back in the early years. But listen to this miracle that had turned my life around forever. So while we were walking home after church, I was just paging through the Bible and a portion of scripture, a bright light fell on it that was illuminating to me. And it was just so bright and illuminating, getting large and small that it got my attention. And as I started to look at it and I began to read, this is what happened. It was this written word. 
which is called the Logos word, became my Rhema word, which became my revealed word, or became my revelation. And that's how we get inspired by the word of God. And so I want to share this with you because I know that my experience was so real. And as I'm talking about it, and as I prepared this message, it seemed like it was only yesterday. So I'm excited that somebody listening to me whose life will never be the same again. Trust me, it's going to change you as you listen to this testimony of mine. This is the scripture that changed my life. It's found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Why I call this kingdom principles? Because God says, seek ye first, 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 the kingdom of God. You see, we look at everything else and we wonder why it's not happening for us spiritually. You've heard us say this over and over again. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We are children of the living God. We are children of the kingdom of God. And our king and our bank is the bank of heaven. And our king is King Jesus. Because the Bible says that through Christ, in Christ. And that's the difference. So, so listen, it says, but the secret is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, be in right standing with God. When you are in right standing with God, then all these things, I like the way the Bible says these things, because they are things, financial, material things, you know, whether it's clothing, whether it's food, whatever, these things doesn't say beg for it, ask for it, it will be added to you. It means that as you seek the kingdom of God, as you put God first and be in right standing with God, before you realize it, my friend, these needs will be met. It says added to you, not beg, not borrow, don't leave. It will automatically be there. Many a times over the years, I didn't realize that this was added, that was added. For example, like the gifts of the spirit. Nobody laid hands on me for me to have the gift of prophecy or the gift of word of knowledge or healing, whatever. It just happened to me. It happened as I began to seek the Lord. And as I prayed for those that were demon possessed, got delivered, laid hands on the sick, they were healed. And I can tell you some of my earliest first miracles before I ever was a pastor. And that's why people think that, oh, I need to become a pastor. Then I can, no, no, no. Bible says, do the work of the ministry. That's what Paul said to Timothy. That's how you distinguish a person's gift and calling. So long before I was ordained as a pastor, I was doing the work of the ministry. We were preaching in the street corners all over our country. And God began to move with signs and wonders and people got healed. People got healed over and over and over again. And I can think of the first early miracles that people are still healed today. One of the first churches we started and it was handed over. And this elder's wife, was her, her eyesight was so poor that with the glasses she was battling. And one day while preaching, I had a word of knowledge, laid my hands on her, and up until today, I'm talking about before I was married, and I'm married now 44 years, and that woman is still healed today. Another woman had a lump on her hand, and I laid my hand on it back then, and the lump was gone, disappeared, and she's still healed. I'm talking about cases before I was a pastor. So... God bless me because I was walking in right standing with God. Sometimes people used to say I was over spiritual because I was like oh, so holy and so on. I didn't plan that. I just thought, let me see God. Let me, let me stay on my points. Listen to this carefully. And so it says, seek first. So I'm giving you an opportunity as it is the beginning of a new year. It is the second week of the first month of the year. You've made New Year's resolutions and whatever it is, but here's the key, putting God first. This is what you gotta decide. And trust me, things will come together like a jigsaw puzzle. Put God first, seek the ways of God, seek the mind of God as I will share further with you. And you will be amazed, my friend, at how things will be added unto you. 
I'm thinking of another miracle. And that's my wife. And this is serious. One day, while driving, I knew where she lived. We were friends with the neighbors. And I drove to her house. And she came out. She said, what are you doing? I'm sitting in my car. I said, you are going to be my wife. And I drove off. There you are. And that's it. She's my wife. Only one wife. And it's countless. How did it happen? Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his righteousness. People say, oh, I'm seeking first God. You can be an unbeliever or a new Christian. And you say, I don't know why this. Seek God first. Put him first. And you'll see how things will turn around. Why? The kingdom of God and his righteousness is kingdom principles. You see, we've got to learn the principles of the kingdom. And we've got to learn the way the kingdom works, not how the world works. I'm coming to show you that in a little, yeah, yeah, in the next verse. Romans 12 verses 2 says, we need to do what? Renew our mind. Before that it says, be not conformed to the world. In other words, don't think like the world thinks. And you look at successful people or you look at professional people say, do it like this, do it. I'm not saying it's wrong. There is good advice out there. But the key is to find out God's will and God's word. So put on. Think like God. Renew your mind. In other words, like I had to do. I had to renew my mind from thinking I was a failure, that I will never succeed. I had a, such a low self-esteem that I think that I'll never be able to own a car. I don't think that anybody will want to marry me, although I'm a handsome dude, right? <laughs> okay. And so I didn't believe it. But when I had this mindset change, ladies and gentlemen, it changed my life forever. I don't have all the time to share all those struggles and things that I had to put first. I was thinking about it, the jobs that I had, the little money that I earned. From day one, I paid my tithes from earning a little, like five rand a week, to earning thousands and paying tithes into thousands. God blessed me. Look at me now. Look at the church. Look at the way I thought of not owning a car. Look at the cars that I've driven over the years. Why? This is the secret. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I did nothing else. I'm not a businessman. I'm not in business. But God has blessed us with all that we have is simply credited to God because I seek the kingdom of God and I seek the ways of God and I seek the mind of God. Oh, can somebody say amen? Well, Romans 12, 2 says, don't think and do it the world's way, but renew your mind in Christ Jesus. Now, the next scripture is going to shock you. And I'm still trying to say, how can I break it down to you? Because Philippines 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Wow. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, when you read on the following scriptures, the Bible says, although Jesus was God, but he took the form of man and he was upon this earth like man and God. So he knew he was in the flesh. That's why when they whipped him, he felt the pain and so on and so forth. So we got to look, look at this and you say, but how can this happen? Because I'm just human. Well, then when you go back, to Genesis 126, what did God say? Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And so when you read in this scripture, Philippines, when you go on, it says that Jesus was in the image of God, the mind of God, the likeness of God, but he took on the form of man. So on earth he was like man. That's why he could suffer. That's why he needed to pray so that the anointing can be restored and increased. So have hope that as you put on the mind of Christ, hey, these the fear, the doubt, the unbelief that's happening in our country right now with this COVID, let me tell you, you're going to come through. You got to listen to my prophecy that I prophesied and I'm going to break it down one of the days so that you'll understand it even better. So let this mind that is in Christ Jesus be in you. In other words, what I'm saying is that I've learned to think positive and not negative. What do I mean? We say, no, it can't happen to me. 
I don't think so. I don't think that's possible. Me? No way. I won't get that promotion. I won't get that job. I don't think. And you go on. Negative. No. Start thinking positive. Put on the mind of Christ. Think on things that are good. Think on things that are pure. And I have this natural ability because it's from God that I have a problem. I pray about it. I leave it at the feet of Jesus and I can go on. I don't stress about it and talk. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. And my wife can be a witness. My daughter is here, can be a witness to that because I've learned to put on the mind of Christ. Leave these things. Jesus said, cast your cares to me because I care for you. So take my cares, leave it at the feet of Jesus. Say, Lord, you're going to take care of it. You're going to make it work. And I'm going to go on being positive, doing what I need to do in the ministry for my family and so on and so forth. Why? Matthew 22, 37 says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your might or your strength. In other words, you've got to make a decision, and it's a good time. It's just the second week in the first month of 2021. Make that decision. In all the resolutions you're thinking about, make this one number one in your life. Because when I had the revelation of that scripture, I decided right there and then that I'm going to get involved in every department in our local church. My background is the Full Gospel Church, and I'm grateful for the many things I've learned. And so, and that's what I did. Every announcement that was made, whatever the call was, I made myself available. And no matter how many duties and responsibilities I had, I never quit. I never gave up. I never went to the leaders and said, this is too much. I need a break. I don't know what that is like. People do that today. I don't know why. I've never done that. I stayed in my local church every Sunday. I never missed a Sunday in my church for 10 years that I was in one church. And that's after that, I went full time. So I decided I'm going to get involved. And I did from Sunday school to youth to being an ambassador like you, we call it today, a cell leader. And I went on to be in the community to all different departments until my time for full time came. So I've got all the experience how to run a local church. So when I'm in the church, later on I realize that when I got given somebody a position and they say to me, it's too hard, I'll say to them, I've been there and I've done that. Go on, do it. You will succeed. I know what it is to be a Sunday school teacher. I know what it is to teach children. I know what it is to be in youth and the problems. So I've got it. But you see, don't look at me now. Look at the sacrifices I made. I never waited for a pulpit in the church. I made my pulpit in the streets, in the highways, in the byways. I preached in buses, in trains. I preached at the town hall next to the Catholic Church for 10 years without a mic PA system. I just preached there every Saturday morning. So that's what brought us. We did open airs all over the country. And I remember when I bought my second car, oh, it was like, you know, almost brand new. And then we used to take these big PA speakers and we used to carry them in the bus because at that time our youth leader just had one car, a Zephyr. And we all used to just get into that car. Then we used to take our pay system in the inner circle buses. And so when I bought this car, they were teasing me. They said, okay, we can put the speakers on the roof of your car. I say, yeah, but have wisdom. Let's put a mat first. Put a mat and then put the speakers and then load the car with as many that could fill in. Why? Seek ye first. Whatever we dedicate, it's supposed to be for God. Remember when we dedicated your car, dedicated your house, it was for God. I went a step further. When I used to fill my tank with petrol, I made a decision. Half is for me and the first half is for God and true. And if I didn't have any more money, I would not use half of my tank that I promised for God. Wow. Doesn't that make you think? Yeah, that's why you get so serious with God. I remember telling my wife when, when she was my girlfriend and I said, I don't have any petrol, so but your tank looks half. I said, yeah, that's God's half. My half is finished. <laughs> that's how serious. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that is kingdom principles. And then again, God says, love the Lord with what? With all your heart, with all your soul. That's your spirit, your, your soul, your inner man. And with all your strength, love the Lord. Listen to this example. 
in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 4. This is really going to bless you. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Now, when you know the story, as he was drinking at the brook, and when the, and when the brook dried up, there was no more water, and the food that he didn't, that ran out. What did God say? I have commanded ravens. Ravens, they say, are very stingy birds. They eat for themselves and they don't share. But God commanded a raven to bring food and feed the man of God. Come on, help me, somebody. We're living in a financial drought right now. We're living with a country. My God, the economy is so bad. You know what's happening, not in South Africa, around the world. And we're wondering what's happening. I hope the president will get a hold of this message. I hope some... I wish the treasurer will get a hold of this message because why? God says that he commanded. I'm getting ready before I close to preach or to pray a commanded blessing over you, my friend. And he says, I have what? Commanded the ravens, stingy birds to feed you. Hey, that's powerful, right? Then look at this. And so God said to him, but I have commanded a widow woman to sustain you. Now isn't this frightening? Isn't this amazing? When you go on and read from there, he says, now all that's dried up, maybe the ravens can't find any more, whatever it is. He says, now go to this widow, a widow woman, God said. In other words, she don't have a provider. Her husband is dead. And when you hear the story, the prophet came to her and she said, I'm making the last meal for my son and I. And after we eat that, we're going to die. But listen to what the prophet said. He said, okay, but go and make me fast. Hallelujah. There's the principle again. Kingdom principles. Make me first a meal. But he heard her. She said, I'm making the last meal. My son and I are going to eat it and we're going to die. He said, I heard you. But go when you're baking. When you're preparing, give me the first cake that you're making first. And in our day to day, what will you think of me? And people have. Said, oh, this pastor talks about money and so on. No, I'm talking about kingdom principles that brought me out of debt. You know, we have such a large building. Our church is so large. We're living, and I've said it before, and I need to say it again. Chesworth, Unit 5 is one of the poorest units between Unit 5 and Unit 2. But here we have this massive cinema that we purchased. And all the renovations that we've done is free. We are debt free. Can you believe that? Why? Because of kingdom principles. So what happened? The story says it's history because this woman provided for the man of God first. And then the Bible says that the flower never ran out. Neither did the oil cease from flowing. She, could, she made enough to pay her debtors and to live on the rest. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what God's going to do for you and I. In this time, he is Jehovah Jireh. He is El Shaddai, the God of the supernatural. That's what we need in this time and season. We need a supernatural manifestation flow that money will come in from unexpected resources because this is God. When you seek the kingdom of God first, it is God's duty according to scripture to make these needs met. How? automatically they will be added oh god you got to go on and read that scripture and so the bible continues to tell us that god will use anyone anybody any situation to do what to meet our needs because he is a miracle worker but again the kingdom principle secret is that you will always give sacrificially when you have even a little why god glories in our righteousness he glories also in our giving remember the widow woman he gloried he said what she gave was everything she had but the rich people gave out of their abundance and they held back so he glorified in her what about job he glorified in his servant Job. He didn't consider my servant. But look, he lost everything. His children, his wife turned against him. But in the last chapter, what does the Bible say? God gave him 
double. I say double for his trouble. Stay faithful. Hang in there. Whatever you're going through, this COVID, you're going to fight it. Stay strong. Be faithful. You're coming through. What you're going through. Oh, somebody give me a hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Bless his holy name. So it's time to command a blessing over your finances. To in an increase that will meet all your needs. You know how you do that? Your husband and wife, lay your hands upon your income, your salary. Your, no more checkbooks now like we used to have. And pray. And I've seen God, we say, stretch that money. That's what he'll do. He'll stretch it. At the end of the month, you'll notice that your needs are met. You might even have a little left over because we serve a God of abundance. Hallelujah. I'm closing with the story. In Matthew 14, there's the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Listen to this carefully from verses 14 to 21. But two things I like about the story. It says, when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. He was moved with compassion. He is a compassionate God. You think he's going to look aside? No, when you call upon him, when you seek him, down and out, he is a compassionate God. Hallelujah. He was moved with compassion and healed their sick. And then the Bible also says that when the hour had come and they were in a deserted place, the hour was already late. And somebody said, send them away, one of his disciples. Jesus said, no, I cannot send them away. He said, we've got to meet their needs. He says, you bring me something. And then what did they say to him? Lord, what do we have except five loaves of bread and two fish? Then it shows about him caring. He cares for your needs. He cares for what you're going through. Jesus said, bring it to me. Now, the disciples wondered, how could that few fish and five loaves of bread feed 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, but this is what God can do. He took it, he prayed over it, and he said to them, make the people sit in rows of 50, and he said, distribute it, and it just increased, and it increased, and it increased, oh hallelujah, and it kept increasing until everyone had enough, and then Jesus says, collect the remnant, collect the rest, and when they co collected, they were shocked. From five loaves of bread and two fishes, they fill 12 baskets full. Come on, get excited. He's a God of abundance. He's a God of the supernatural. He'll take the little and he'll stretch it and he will meet every need. You think it's the last bit of finance. It's the last bit. Oh God, I cannot tell you over the years, in the early years of the ministry, how people we just, I remember one incident, I said to my wife, I just got two rents and it was two coins, like rubbing it together. I, said, I don't know what we're going to do with this. It wasn't long. Somebody knocked on our door. Never forget that. And back then, it was a lot of money, right? Knocked on our door and somebody gave us 500 rands. They said, the Lord spoke to me while I got my salary. I've got to come and give this to you, servant of the Lord. It was like, thank you, Jesus. We've got two rands and now 500 rands come. I mean, miracles upon miracles. And when we're speaking about how we got into Twin City, that was a miracle, financial breakthrough. We were renting at the Methodist Church, 500 rands a month rent, that we were just barely making it. When this Twin City became available, the landlord wanted, I'll never forget the amount, 2,750. Think about 500. That's all we had. And now he says 2,750. I said, we don't know what we're going to do. So I said to them, let's see God first. Let's put God. We went in, gave him a check. I said, don't cash it right now. Hold on to that check to the landlord. We're not, and we're going to renovate this place. It took two weeks, day and night to renovate it, make it come over. While we were doing it, God commanded a father and son walk down the aisle. I was right in the front and they said, God spoke to us. My father's giving 5,000. I'm giving 5,000. Ladies and gentlemen, that was it. We never got into debt in this building. We paid in the early years before we started doing renovations. I always had six months rent in advance. We never ran short. Oh, the bottle never ran dry. The meal never ran out. God has met our need. How often people ask me, I even ask my son now that he's more in control of the finances with the with the treasury. Are we in the red? He says, no, dad. 
We've never been in the red. And right now we're not in the red. But we don't have enough. We just have enough. Paying the staff. Making sacrifices. But God is our provider. Because he is what? Jehovah Jireh. This testimony is long. I could finish it in the next message perhaps. But we rented this building. The landlord refused to sell. When the time came to buy, that's another story. Another supernatural manifestation. Let me say this part to get you excited. We sat with the landlord. A couple of my leaders were with me, my wife and my son. And he said, somebody's offered us five million for this building. Three people. And one of them were pastors. And he said, they offered us. You got to pick. So I offered him. I'll never forget this. I had offered him three one uh, one thousand four hundred a hundred thousand yeah a hundred thousand and he said to me you got to pick it up they nudging me pick it up pick it up i said to the landlord god spoke to me and this is the amount that i'm going to give you you can take your kids and kick us out but that's it see revelation miracles i'm going to preach on that one of the weeks Revealed miracles, revelation miracles. And long story short, he had a meeting with his family. He came out shockingly said, Pastor, what you offered, we'll take. You go into Cape Town to preach, shook my hands, come back, we'll sign the papers. Man of his word and everything was done. We paid off the building in 20 months. Made an installment, paid it off. And the story goes on. Forever and ever. And everything we did up until now was supernaturally provided. Hundreds of thousands came into the building supernaturally from unexpected resources. That's the God I'm talking about. And that's the God that can meet your need. No matter what you're going through, stay faithful. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be what? Added shall be what added so i want to pray with you right now and i want to get ready oh thank you jesus oh hallelujah we bless you lord i want to pray this commanded blessing over you and i got one verse just using one to back it up deuteronomy 28 8 the lord will command the blessing on you and your storehouse and all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Woo! Hallelujah! So I want to pray, stand in agreement and command the breakthrough for your healing, for your financial breakthrough, for your business, for the contract to come through. And you're going to get shocked. I never forget one of my leaders came to me and said, I got to share this with you. I am a small business and I, I, I basically work alone. And I cannot believe that they gave me this business, th this deal. And they said, I can have it. And so he brought his tithes to give it to me. He said, how could it happen, pastor? He said, no, I realize what you preach, what you teach us. You told me to claim it and I claimed it and I got it. This, I can keep you here all day. God, I've seen people put money into people's accounts. He's done it for me. He's done it for members. They go and their accounts are paid off. I remember one person went to pay, uh, was it Edgar's? Not Edgar's. It was another furniture store. Oh gosh, I just can't get it. And they went to pay the installment. And the person said, it's paid up. He said, what do you mean? He said, it's paid up. Russell's, Russell's. It was Russell's. And they went to pay person said it's paid up these are true testimonies so now that we are in this time when things are so bad financially believe god you won't lose your job if you lose that job it's going to open a better door for you that's how you need to think think positive put on the mind of christ and let these miracles happen in jesus name so i'm getting ready to pray with you we want to pray and remember those that have lost loved ones to this virus, even if it's not the virus, people are just dying, they're having heart attacks, they're so fearful of what's going on, nurses, doctors are dying. There's fear in this nation and in this land and all over. What about those of you that are fighting this virus? Fight it 
in the name of Jesus. Fight it. Do what you have to do, but fight it. Don't lose hope. Stand strong because he will bring you through. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you that your word will not return void, but it would accomplish everything that it has been sent to do. And I declare that it will, will meet every need in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray, oh God, heal the hearts that are broken right now who have lost loved ones. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to all of us. But your grace is sufficient, Father. Bring them through in the name of Jesus, Lord. Our hearts go out to them, Father. Lord, I think of those that are fighting this virus, fighting a financial breakthrough for their jobs, for their business. This word that I preached will bring hope, will increase their faith, will cause them to believe that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. I release a commanded blessing over them now in the name of Jesus. I command your blessings to be over you. I command your needs to be met. I command your sick bodies to be healed. I command your debts to be paid. Oh, in Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, Father. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. And don't forget that as you pass by the church, it will be open from 10, sorry, 8 a.m. to 10. Pastors will be there. Why? For you to come and leave your tithes and offering. I know it's a traditional thing for us. We want to give it to the church because you know we pray over it. And of course, if you haven't got your calendar, come and take one. It's a victorious calendar. It says victory, victory, hallelujah. No matter what we're going through, I'm not sure when this COVID will be over. We have hope that the vaccine will come for us, but you got to hold on to Jesus. Get this calendar and it will encourage you. I love you. Don't forget, it's up to you.